complete about in, in the whole picture of the quarter right here. Then, yes, we're starting out learning most importantly is the, the idea about what the definite in the world is, right? Learn what it is. And then uh, once we got through the fundamental theory of calculus, we all of a sudden we realized that taking antiderivative is, is a big work, right? So from that point on, at some point in the quarter, we, we will always uh, have two different branches of, of work right here doing applications. Right? We're going to spend some time doing applications, and then we're going to also spend some time just learning technique. Say that. I mean, so the, the substitution method was also a technique already to find antiderivative, but that's just the, the, the sort of like the beginning, and then we put the pause on that for a little while, and then we're now going to step over to really find, I mean, what's good, what's useful about definite integral, right? So that's, we're going to spend about a couple weeks or, or maybe three weeks into uh, doing the application of, of definite integrals, and, and then once we're good enough with that, and the more we go into this, the, the more you're going to feel that we need to look for better techniques to handle more of these application problems. So at some point in the quarter, even later in that, we're going to turn over to look at techniques again, focus, focusing just on the anti stuff. Okay. And so that's the plan for the quarter. So now let's look at the area. So it's among one of those uh, problems where we apply the definite interval. So now before we get started, this is my approach for teaching how, how you can apply calculus to areas here. You guys gotta take my word on this, and I believe I've said this many times that an integral is accumulation. I gotta really bear it out for me. Because I've been doing this. See, accumulating, accumulating the strikes, right? Until you get a thicker area, thicker area. Got the idea? And so in that way, now let's say we we're still, in the end, it's an area, but we, we're no longer doing that kind of simple area where it's just between a curve and the x axis, right? And then you between some interval, that's too easy for us now. Okay? But then uh, what I what we want to do now is let's say you are introduced to some general region like that. See what I'm saying now? A, a region that's not necessarily regular, it's not necessarily a, a rectangle or a triangle or anything like that. So you've got a region. So we want to find the area of that region, right? So now here's the plan right here. It's all about accumulation idea. You can on one way, you can decide to approach to get this area by putting in vertical stripes. See what I'm saying now? And then we're accumulating vertical stripes. Okay. And so in that way, vertical stripes, if you put the x and y axis, uh, you put that system of axes in together with that picture right here. And either way how it is, any vertical stripes, right? Relative to the x axis, it has a thickness, and that thickness here is called e x. You guys follow it? Okay. But in the end, the point out that any stripe that we put, any stripe that we put, right, has a length. Has a length. Okay, and it has a thickness. That's the generality about any stripe. Doesn't matter if we're putting it vertical or horizontal. See what I'm saying? No? So as a generality, right here for now, any stripe, right? has a length of the stripe okay, and the thickness. Good? So now you guys think about it, just a, just a stripe like that. There's a length, there's a thickness. So what's going to happen if we multiply the length with the thickness? We get the, we get the area, right, of the the thin stripe. Right. Even the stripe right here is small, it's just a pencil stroke, right? It's small, it's just a pencil tip right here, but it has a thickness on its own right here. So we can still get it in area. Now, high school geometry or elementary geometry claim that a, a, a drawing like that has a zero area, but for us here, it has an area. Because for high school and geometry, it's neglectable. That's why it's a zero, but now for us, here, it seems like it's it's been a really small area where we can keep accumulating up and it gets bigger. Got the idea now? So in that way, now I gotta emphasize that again. You see, any stripe that you draw, right, has a length and it has a thickness. So now multiplying the length and the thickness here, we get the area of the thin stripe. Sounds good. And so in that way, back to the picture I was about to draw. Just like that, right? 
If we, put, if we place a stripe here vertically, that means it's going to be perpendicular to the x axis, right? So it makes sense that the thickness here is going to be dx. We mean that together. It's an infinitesimally small change in, in x. Thickness, yeah. The x rep represents the thickness when you put the stripe vertical. Okay? Agree with that? And so now, there's even better idea here. So now think about it. Just right now, when you're putting your stripes vertically, right? Then we're gonna after we know that hey, the area for each thin stripe here is the length of time the thickness. Think a little further in terms of the length here. So when you're putting your stripes vertically like this, the length of your stripe is limited or restricted between between some upper curve, right, and some lower curve, upper boundary and lower boundary. So now I call it upper, upper boundary and lower boundary simply because now we're putting a picture like that, and then we're putting our stride vertically, and then we reference that with this, the axis system, system right here. And so the boundary is just the boundary, but in that way, the, the setting, then there has to be a, a, some upper boundary and some lower boundary. You guys follow it with that? So the upper boundary, if you, I tend to call that the, I tend to call that the upper, some upper, some upper curve, right? And then the, the one down here, we call that the, the lower curve. Well, I'm saying that even though technically it's just one boundary going around, it could be just one boundary going around, but we can purposely break that. We can purposely find that point where we can break that into two separate curves. See what I'm saying? That okay. we can find that one uh, point. We can break that. You know, from that point up, it's one upper curve. From that point down, it's one lower curve. Okay. So the point now that. The light, each light here, we can develop, develop a little further. Upper curve, right? Subtract the lower curve. That's giving, that gives you the light of each stripe there. And then we multiply with the thickness. Thickness. That gives me the area of one thin stripe. But then, again, we're not just getting the area of one thin stripe. We need to accumulate, right? So this is what that symbol is for. Right? We're accumulating all of those stripe areas from some starts, right? To some end here. You guys follow it? Right? We're accumulating all of those. So in a in a situation where you're putting your stripes vertical, in, in a vertical setting like this, then the start here so has to be the on the left, right? On the left end, the, the most left end of your Area right here, and then the right end right here from start to end. Right? The end is going to be on the right hand side, like that. Right from the left to the right, right? being the, the start to the end. That accumulated. That's the generality that I want you guys to, to understand. Are we good with that? Right. And so. What, what happens there is we've got, uh, we've got the line, right? Stripes. Stripes. Multiply the thickness. Then we're accumulating on that, right? From start. Yeah, that's the funny metal. Then here, when we are using, when we're placing our stripes in the vertical. When we're using vertical stripes, then the start and the end has to be from the left to the right, right? and then the light here has to be the upper curve minus the lower curve. And the thickness here further becomes a the dx expression. We're good with that then. Okay? So that's more like a, a more precise wording now. So now, vertical stripe is just a choice. How we're doing it? It's just a, a choice of the plan of how we're doing it. Aside from this plan, we can do a we can get the exact area using a different plan right here. So I'm gonna figure out all of these extra notes right here, okay? And I'm gonna retain the exact uh, region. I'm gonna retain the exact region. But as far as the next information, I'm gonna figure out all of these notes. The same region. Now we put the x and y axis on, right? Like I mentioned earlier, we can also use a horizontal stripe here, right? accumulating it. See what I'm saying there? Right. 
So just like that funny metal, any stripe, when you are putting it, it doesn't matter which way you're putting it, there's a length of the stripe, right? there's a length of the stripe, and there's a thickness of the stripe. It's the only difference now is that we're putting our stripe here horizontally. Okay? So in that way, now you guys think about it, when, the, then when any of these stripes are being placed horizontally, then what's the thickness here on the how do we represent the thickness for that? Because you notice that the stripe this time lands directly into the y-axis, right? So how do we how do we write how do we, how do we express the thickness? Dy. Dy. Yes, exactly. Right. So the thickness now becomes a dy. And then the light. So I'm slowly putting the information in. Right? Back to the picture over here. The length is going to be restricted, right? Or some length that's limited between some some curve, the left side of the boundary, right? To the right side of the boundary. You see what I'm saying now? So in other words, you can think of that as see, there's a there could be some breaking point right here, where after that point there's a left curve and there's a right curve. Think about the working point is here, the same one loop, one boundary, when you break that into one part of that on the right, and the other part is on the left. And that's what I mean now by left, I mean right curve minus the left curve. Okay. So, there's a right curve, right? Minus the left curve. See what I mean? Okay. And that gets me the length, right? And so again, multiplying the length with the thickness gets me the area of one thin stripe. And so in that way, now to get the total area, we are accumulating all of those uh, stripe areas, right? From start to end, start to end. But this time, start to end goes what? Think about those stripes again. We place them horizontal. And so if we accumulate them, then how do we accumulate them? We go like this, right? See what I'm saying now? You see my action? So we go from bottom up, right? Bottom up, okay. Okay, so start is actually at the bottom, right? At the lowest point and ending is at the highest point, the ending of our accumulation. Right? And so in that way, so from the bottom, the lowest y value to the to the top, right? Bottom up. Yeah. Okay. So that's the that's how we're setting it up when we're placing our stripes horizontally. So, vertical stripes or horizontal stripes, I've got to make it clear in, in my way of teaching it, right? Then it's just simply an option, a way to get it done like that, okay? A, a plan that we go for that. And then later on, as we get more into really doing the work, then there will be some situation where we've got to have to decide that using vertical stripe would give a better, more effective work with that, or using horizontal stripe. It's all going to give the area, but one work is going to be more the, the, the challenging than the other work. One work is going to be a little more effective than the other work. Okay. But it's all going to get to the exact same answer. So using vertical stripe or using horizontal stripe is just a joint. Are we good with that? But now let's go even further, a little further into it. each one of these uh, set up right here. Now if you're using vertical stripe, that's why I've been putting this uh, foundation in your learning since a very early day. Remember that. First time when I introduced you an antiderivative and all that, right? In, in, in introducing the, the symbol for, for indefinite interval. This d expression right here has a meaning. It's got to be, see here, it says dx, right? That means it's got to be consistent because eventually when you are subtracting out to get to like, your life, your life has to be expressed in terms of, in, in, as a function somehow, right? As a function. But what's the main variable of this function? It's got to be the dx here, right? So the variable that's the variable of the function that represents the light here is going to be expressed as a sum function of x. Why is that? Because the, d, the thickness here is recognized as a dx expression. Or you feel that. That's why now a little more mathematical setting right here. You see many textbooks that write this formula. When you use vertical stripes, right, then the upper curve is represented by the sum, sum function f of x. When you're looking at Curve at the trade, and it's a function f of x, isn't it? So some function f of x minus some, some lower function g of x. 
So assuming f is the high one here, the low one, that's why I'm placing them along each other over here. And then that difference there is the height we multiply with the dx. So we're accumulating that from z from some interval on the left to the right, right? Start to air like that. That's how we get the, the area. Like I said, we're going with this formula when we're decided, when we have decided to use the vertical strike. Just right here, the breaking point, I can produce that breaking point right here. So this curve down right here is some function of g, right? It's some function g of x, I mean some function g of x, depending on where x is, right? But then if we're looking at the other way around, if, you, if you're using horizontal stride, you know, the y value is what matters, right? And so the curve here, there's a left curve, there's a right curve, and each of the curves here has to be expressed as some function h of y, and then there's a is a Q of Q of Y. You have to learn to look at the picture sideways sometimes. So, in that argument, you get, yes, back on this picture of mine here. You see? Simply because when we decided to, when we, once we have decided to put the, the horizontal stripes, right, we recognize our thickness being the dy, so these curves are going to be expressed as functions of Y. And so, that's why the Right curve, think of that as some function h of y. And the left curve, think of that as some function g of y. Okay. And so we have a difference multiplied with dy, and then we're accumulating over some integral on the y axis. You see, we get on the vertical axis, you get, okay, from the bottom up. Okay. That's how we get the, the area. I do admit it looks a little unusual at, at first time when you when you're as you look at the picture kind of sideways like that when you need to decide that 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 you're gonna go with the horizontal stripe or thing like that, right? But it will get better and, and you will get more comfortable with that as we go as we go on. I'll look at that right there. All right. So using vertical stripe or, or horizontal stripe right now it's just a, a plan, a choice, right? So I'm gonna design the first example over here. Let's look at the Let's now look at example one. Okay, so you gotta keep in mind. That's why don't be too worried about is it how, is the curve you know is it gonna be h of y the g of y? It's all starting out with your decision here first. Okay, and then your decisions and you're gonna turn the curve into a function of x y or function of x. It's all depends on your need for them. Okay, the curve itself is just a curve, it's a drawing on the point. You guys good to be on that okay? So. Let's look at example one right here. We want to find the area okay, of the triangle. Find the area of the triangle bounded by three vertices. About zero. All right, so now let's go ahead and have a drawing of that picture right here. You see, I don't need you to worry about what kind of curve it is, because we need you to just simply look at the region, okay? and then we're going to decide the, the boundary curve. So, on the x and y plane right there, 0, 0 is here, 1, 0 is here. Agree? Then 1, 1 is about there. So now it's a triangle that's bounded between these three vertices. Sounds good? Right there, you have that area. Okay. So, this, I'm drawing shading in, right? You see, it just even when we're shading, we gotta use stripes, right? To shade it. You see what I'm saying? Now, but now we're gonna shade it with a little more uh, systematic method for you: vertical stripe or horizontal stripe. Okay. And so, the point of this example here: let's do both. Okay. Let's do both. So now I'm gonna start out. I'm gonna think about that. If we were accumulating with vertical stripes, okay, that, I'm drawing that erect. Okay. Guys, 
So what's going to happen with the vertical strike here? Yes, the thickness here has to be what? Px, right? So, so in this way of handling it, using a vertical strike, right? if we went that way, here's how your problem, here's how your solution is going to work. The thickness here becomes a Px. Are we good with that? Okay. And maybe throw in an explanation, right? Thickness. Px. Are we good? And then the light. Never bad to record things down and carefully forget. The light for each stripe here, see? So now there's a you're gonna so, so now once you see the stripes, right? And it's now becoming easy to identify who the upper curve is and who the lower curve is. So I'm saying that it's anywhere that you put a stripe. See, I put two stripes here already, and each stripe here has various different lights, right? So, but generally speaking, they're all being limited between the upper curve here and the lower curve, right? right. So, how do I see the the upper curve? The upper curve is this one. It's just some curve. It's just some curve, but now we need to see that, that curve here as a sum function of x. Now, you see what I mean? The curve itself is just a drawing but now on, on our demand, right? We need to see that as a function in terms of x. Sounds good? So now with your algebra, right, you guys are advancing up to see what function is this in terms of x. It's a 45 degree line, is it? So f of x equals what? Equals x. Equals x, right? Slope one, right? Slope one going through the origin, right? 45 degrees. And so the light here is going to be just like that. The, the upper curve, f of x equals x. So I'm going to go x, right? Minus the lower curve is right here. It's that lower boundary right there. Are we good? Okay. The lower boundary. But now recognizing the lower boundary as a function of x, what function is that? The lower boundary, by the way, is just simply right on the x axis. It's just zero. It's just zero. You guys all following along right there? So the bottom curve right here, see? Make a note of that. G of x equals zero. That's the bottom boundary, right? So you got x minus zero. That's the line. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, huh? So now we are ready for putting it in you know, as an inner world here, see? We want to. So we've got length x minus zero right? times the thickness dx. So that already is enough for the area of one stripe, right? When we put the stripes anywhere. And then we're accumulating all of those. So where do, where do we start? See, think about the think about those stripes that we're putting in. Where is the first stripe on the left that we can place? It's right here, right? Even though it's a very, very short one, so zero length, right? And then we keep having more length and more length. Where's the last stripe that we can put? Right at one. Okay, so the way. Okay. So now the accumulation happens what? The accumulation happens from zero to one. That's how we formulate it in the interval. So the area now is claimed to be equal to this interval over here. So now with the math work, it comes out. See? And by the way, so now at this point you can see that x minus zero is ridiculously x, right? So integrating that with the fundamental calculus. One half x square, right? And evaluating from zero to one. But still, so we're gonna get that equal to, and that's simple enough. So you guys do your uh, whatever math work for that. Okay, the answer comes out even being a one half. You guys follow one? So the answer with the fundamental theorem of calculus is easy. But then let's see if it makes sense. Let's see if it makes sense with what we used to know okay, before calculus. I mean, we don't have to wait until calculus to know the area of this triangle. What kind of triangle is this? Isosceles. Yeah, right, isosceles triangle, right? And see, isosceles means it's got two equal sides here. What length is this? One, right, length one. How do we calculate area of a triangle? Base times height, right? So one times one. Multiply with one half. So, before calculus, we already knew that the, the area of that triangle is a one half. But now, with calculus, it, it comes in and we learn the way to set it up for that. Right. The, the point is to learn how to use calculus set up because you, you will be exposed to even more the, the challenging figures later on. Okay. But that's the way. So, you know? 
So as I said, the plan here is not to only work through the vertical stripe. Right? Let's see how we can find the exact area again. And keep in mind, at this point, we already knew the answer. So whatever the, the work we're doing for the setup, it better come out being a one half, right? It, it, it falls into a one fourth or a one third. There's something wrong with the setup. You want to say no? Okay. And so now, that's how we're using the vertical stripes. I'm gonna clear. I'm gonna clear out almost everything except the, the picture here. And everything inside, I'm also going to clear it out. All right. And I'm going to also take out these extra noting right here. I just want to leave the original drawing. All right. So that's our area. But what happens if we're using horizontal stripe this time? The, the boundary being the curve is just the curve, right? It's just the drawing. Yeah. Let's see how I can put in the horizontal stripe. Horizontal stripe for this through this area region really looks like that. Agree? Right. So in that way, once again, let's track down thickness and all that. Thickness has to be what? Way how I'm seeing it, thickness has to be right and dy. There you go. Okay. What about the length? Apparently, the length you got to be. See any of our stripes in graph here that I'm drawing, right? Got to be limited between some curve on the right, right, and some curve on the left. See what I'm Right? Left curve, right curve, right. And so, what's the right curve right here? Is this straight line? This straight vertical line? Right here? Are we good? But then, as a function, this curve now got to be expressed as some function of g right here. I mean, some function of y. Keep saying the wrong thing here. Some function of y, so I call it, how about h of y? Think about a y value given that height, a y value given that height. See what I'm trying to explain right there? So, what function is that? I mean, if we're looking kind of sideways like this, right? And it looks like there's a flat line, it's flat. Flat constant line, right? So what do you see? This curve right here, you can think of that as simply one. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you're looking at, if you're treating this as your input axis here, the axis that has the input, right? The output going this way, and the axis of the, the, the inputs going this way. So at each input here, you've got the constant height, constant output, constant output being one, yes. right. so that's why H Y equals one. Yes, it's, it's a little unusual that we're looking at the picture side like that. It will get better. Let me show you guys this trick that helps a little bit. Anyone got an empty piece of paper? You got an empty piece of paper? Yeah. Let me show you guys this trick here. I mean, it works for me when 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 I. Okay, so the x and y axis goes like this, right? Y axis, x axis. So this is how we know it's right. Yes. So you want to say up? No, we turn it sideways over here. Right? And look like that. You kind of go the inverse way over here. Yeah. So that same area. Okay. That same area you do the way I'm looking at it, right? So this is this is function of of x, this is function of x, right? But then the same curve right here, if you look at it, like this. The, the, the y axis going this way, though, right? And the x axis is the, is the output, so that is a 1 right there. See what I mean? And then what curve is this? You can express that as a function in terms of y, not see? Still x equals y. Yeah, x equals y, right? So, in that way, this one, now we're expressing that as a function, some g of y equals which y? Trust me, when you flip the paper a few times, you will get comfortable, comfortable to it, and, and it will, will get a lot better. And then later on, you don't need to do that anymore. So, see, this is the right curve. This is the left curve, right? So now the length here is determined by one minus y. Actually, you guys follow it? So 
So now putting it together, we're looking out as the length 1 minus y, we need to multiply with dy. And see, look at how things are consistent with what I've been saying here. The thickness being the d expression, right? And so your function here got to be in terms of y. Now we've got everything in terms of y. Right? And so now we're going to be accumulating. Those are stripes here. The lowest stripes we can put is when y equals 0 down here. You guys follow it? And then the, the, the highest stripe that we can place is up here. Right? So from 0 down to 1 again. Right? Alright, so that's how we find the, the area. Right. So now we're going to go ahead and do our math work on top of that. So that will give me uh, y minus a half of y squared. Right. So valuing that from 0 to 1. It gives me a, a zero substitution here. I can see ahead that it's, it's all zero out, right? So really, what matters here is just the one right here. So we got one minus a half and one square right there. So really, that's just another one half, right? It's one times I mean one minus one half. And there is another one half. We found the area again, the exact area, just using horizontal stripe this time. Same figure, right? Same exact region. We use two different uh, approaches. Please, any questions? All right, so let's now put away the, this example. I want to bring in another example over here. So when you are actually doing a problem, a lot of times later on you will be put into the, in that situation where you have to decide uh, to go with one uh, one way or the other, and one way will be better than the other. Right now, in this example, both ways is good, right? Both ways is good. It doesn't cost us as, as much, right? Maybe you know, looking at that using the vertical using the horizontal stripe is a little uh, hard to recognize because we're not uh, comfortable with that yet, right? It's something that we do commonly. But uh, trust me, it's, it's, it's the amount of easiest, I mean, the, 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 you know, easy for the calculation, it's just about the same level. Example two right here. We still want to find the area of a triangle, right? Bounded by the three vertices. This time, let me call that how about a one vertice, a zero, zero. Another one is that uh, how about three, zero, and one is two, one. Right. So right here in this small space, good enough for me to draw a picture. Point zero, zero, zero is of course here. Two, one is up here. So we got a triangle again, right? Bounded by these three vertices. Is this that then? Region of using some kind of a slanted shading with that, right? So that it won't interfere too much with our strike. All right. So here, let's work it out using vertical stripes. Either way is going to work. Going as, going any way is going to work. But now be aware that one way will be more work than the other way. One way will be more work than the other way. This is about the, the problem I want to bring in with that. So, but let's just purposely do that. So using vertical stripes, this is how it looks right here. See, this is how I place my vertical stripes. Just like that. You guys agree? Okay. Vertical stripes, just like that. There's an upper curve and there's a lower curve. See that now? But do you see anything weird with this uh, with, with, with this method? Anything that unusual about this? Or anything that may potentially bringing in some trouble for us. Can you recognize something here? Is that what you were seeing? In the way how I'm seeing, yes, it's the stride is between some upper curve and lower curve. There's that breaking major right there. There's that breaking up major where it switches. Because obviously this curve is way different with that curve, right? And it's not like one function that goes through, you see what I'm saying, huh? Okay, and that's the idea right there. 
So, and specifically, that breath critical point is at 2, right? So those stripes are in between 0 and 2 are between this curve and the, the x-axis. But then those other stripes, when we go beyond 2, those vertical stripes still, right? Vertical stripes, but in this zone right here, and then it's got to be somewhere between this line which has, which has a different behavior right there. So likely a different function right there, right? And still between the 0. Am I making sense? Okay? And that's the, the breaking up nature of that. I, I believe mean, that's what you saw as well, right? But it could be you know, hard to explain at first. So now, here's how I'm setting it up for here. Yes, fundamental, fundamentally upper curve minus lower curve, right? To get the light here. So thickness, or vertical stride thickness here, of course, it's the X, right? No doubt about it, right? The light right here. But now let's get into the light. Thickness, the light here. For this zone right here, right? Alright, putting that a little too rush right here. So for me, the light. Okay, how do we determine light right here? See, there's this upper curve right here. What line is this? What function is this? We express that curve here as a function of x. Piece wise? No, just, just this one right here. Uh, uh, the here? Yes, in here. A little more specific. Uh, a, little, a little more specific. God, I uh, uh, have x. I have x? I, I think. It's been a while since I've done algebra 1. I think it's 1 half x. 1 half Why is it 1 half though? Because of? Over yeah, the rise will run, right? The, the slope rise is what we want, right? It will run two right here. Yep. So the, the upper curve is one half x. So I got f x equals one half x. And then the lower curve is the line of some g of x, right? Equal to zero. The x axis, can yeah. that agree? But one half x minus zero. But sadly, this line is only. Anywhere, only anywhere from 0 to 2. Are you seeing what I'm trying to explain? That's the point of that. The line is determined by that formula, but only in that interval from 0 to 2. But then the line will be determined differently. So now it's still 0 is the low, right? But this curve here, what curve is this? This small segment right here. And you can call it some. some some function I'm bringing out of matter here. How about m of x? Okay. What's m of x? Okay. From the left to the right, the curve is falling down here. So what slope is that? I mean, it's a line anyway, so we got to talk about slope, right? It makes sense out of that. But it should be a negative slope, right? Negative x. Negative x, but not just only negative x. Yes, I agree, negative x. Anything else? Slope negative one, right? But think about it, if we're tracing this out, right? It hits here about plus three of them. Minus x plus three, that line of them. So easier, so you guys think just substituting in remember the negative x plus b. Pick one of these two points of them and throw it in, right? So that one is easier. The upper y minus uh, 3 for x, right? Plus b again, so b equals plus 3. Keep on setting up. So the line there, the line there here is minus x plus 3. That's m. That's the upper curve. So upper curve subtract lower curve being the 0 again, right? But this is only anywhere inside of that interval 2, 3. See how I'm indicating it? So we write down the records carefully. So now getting up, setting up the area. Here's the trouble that we end up for ourselves here. It's gonna have to be one separate accumulation, going from those uh, stripe areas from zero to two. Right? In two separate zones, we got two separate things, right? We go from zero to two, and then we have a half x minus zero, right? The x, and we have another one over right here. We need to add with the other accumulations. Minus x plus 3, right? Minus 0 is the x from 2 to 
to the three. That's the setting up. Yeah. Now, as a final version, 0 to 2 or 1 half x dx. We need to add that to the integral of minus x plus 3. X went from 2 to 3. Are we good with that? Right. So now we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to get that answer out, right? So this one right here gives me, okay, it's going to be a 1 6, right? X, oops, nope. So 1 fourth, X squared, we'll be evaluating from 0 to 2. This next one here is a minus, and then we have uh, the minus 1 half X squared plus 3X, and we'll be evaluating from 2 to 3. You guys can go ahead and spend time with your your own uh, substituting and substituting in work there to get that answer. The answer should come out being a three half altogether. But uh, like I said, here we are using the calculus for that. So we got it done, right? We got to the exact answer right there, but so it it was a little bit of a, of a trouble, a little bit of a struggle because there was a breaking up major in this problem, right? If we go with that plan using the vertical stripes, see what I'm saying now? Okay. So when you're done with taking notes right there, I'm going to switch, switch to the other board. Let's look at what happened if we approach a problem using the horizontal stripes. Same area, same picture over here, right? Zero, zero, two, three, right? Two, one, right here. Like that, like this, right? Maybe things look like this. So you are stripe this time. What if we took that as horizontal stripes? That's the stripe going like that, right? You know what I'm saying? So this time things are actually a lot easier. I mean, I shouldn't say that too soon here, but there's, a, there's only one right curve. Call it some h of y, and then there's one left curve. We can call it some q of y. Are we good? Okay. And we don't have to worry about it breaking up because anywhere you put the stripe from some beginning at the bottom to some ending at the top, right? Any of those stripes is always good, good but just between these two left and right only, and each of the left and right stays just one curve without worrying about it breaking up. You what I'm saying? Okay. So. In that way, once again, let's roll back to the, the, the starting ground here. I think that's here is what d dy this time, right? The the right hand side curve this time. How do I write that? You see, earlier we found, but you can always start from the beginning. It's a line in the, in the x, right? Y equals minus x plus three earlier, so we can easily rearrange this. X equals minus y plus three as well. That's the right curve, right? Curve on the right hand side here. And I'm going to erase this extra explanation minus y plus 3. Right? And then this same curve right here, this curve right here, you can write it as a 2y actually. This curve on the right hand, on, on the left hand side. So your the length right here, right? the length of each stripe, right? so we're going to have left and right minus left. So minus y plus 3, subtract. To y. So now we'll be ready for the accumulation. Length minus y plus 3 minus 2y okay. times thickness, dy. See, and it's all consistent of dy, all the variables in terms of y. We're accumulating from where do we accumulate? The starting is from 0, right? What's the highest right we can have, have here? 1, right? 0 to 1. Yeah. See how it happens? Get the area. Maybe do the usual calculating work. And by the way, this in, in this here you can divide it as a integral of zero, one, and minus three y, right? Plus three is there. Three y. So that's making it the minus zero two y squared plus three y. And we're going to evaluate that from zero to one. The answer better come out being a we have to get. It. But I can leave that for you guys to double check. 
And so now, after this prompt, it clears out the file and saying that technically as a choice, there's nothing bad about any one of the two choices. If I'm using horizontal side and using vertical side, it's all going to work. See, this example point out that it's some problem in some regions, right? Using one way is better than the other way in the sense of less effort. All right. So let's now really, I'm going to bring in one example where you're going to, we're going to all learn to identify it out and out. We don't have to waste time doing both ways, right? We're just going to look at the problems and be able to decide. So let's call it example three. Right, this is more like a real experience right here. So let's find the area. I'm going to go ahead and give the, the picture of the, the curve to this problem. So, this curve right here is a x minus y minus 2 all the way to 0. And the other curve is going this way. The curve is the one going x squared minus y to 0. So the curve is just curve. The area we're looking for is right in here, trapped between the, 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 the word we say is the enclosed between the y axis, right? And then these two curves there. Right? That's it. Yeah, so whatever you see about the curve, the equation of the curve, hold on to that thought. The idea now that those curves generate generate an area that's close inside between the curves and the, the y-axis. Okay. And so for this problem here, allow me to go back into the, the wording and. and I want to make a note for you a little bit, right? So as far as the note in here. So for this problem, we're going to need to decide, right? Decide uh, whether to integrate with respect to the x or y. Or what? Are we using vertical stripes or horizontal stripes? Are we using the X or, or the Y? Now we, so, like I said, at this point, an area is just an area. Right? The curves that give the picture are just curves. You want say, you know, whatever the equations given right there, we, we look at them as the way they are. We're looking at them as is for now. right? But then in the first thing here, we need to decide uh, to integrate in terms of uh, x or in terms of y. Whichever plan is going to be more uh, uh, convenient for us, whichever plan is going to cost less effort for us, right? we're going to go with that plan right there. And so now that's why I think about it. There's the same picture over here. Maybe it's a good idea that I'm going to draw another one as well. The exact same uh, picture over in the different board here. So let me put this wing over here. So, we, we always have two choices, right? But we only need to pick one, whichever choice is going less effort for us, we're going to go with that one. So, what about uh, horizontal stripes here? The only thing that we're trying to stay away from is to stay away from the breaking up nature, right? So, if we go with horizontal stripe like this, you see where I put my red stripe here, right, being horizontal. Then the stripe there, if we go with horizontal stripe, then and the thickness, again, from what we're learning, the thickness is going to have to be dy. But whatever I'm showing you now is sort of like a brain process, right? The brain process right here. So we're just going to have to learn to look at the picture over here. So if you're putting horizontal stripe, it's going to have to be the thickness dx, I mean dy. You guys follow it? Okay, and that means we are going to be integrating in respect to y. Okay? But then, is, there, is it advantageous about this, or is it going to get some disadvantage about this picture over here if we're using horizontal stripes? You see, using horizontal stripe right here, we have a breaking up area right there where I put the dotted line. Okay, on would be that because 
if we place a below that breaking up line like that, right? Those horizontal stripes below that are limited between the y-axis and this term on the right hand side. Well saying that. But now if you're looking at those uh, stripes above that breaking up line like that, then it changes behavior, right? The left curve is still the y-axis, but the right curve is the different curve, the right curve is determined by us. Well saying that. So that would definitely definitely bring you into you know two separate so the, the inner rows because of that breaking up later in the picture. See what I'm saying now? So that's a that's one plan. What about the other the same picture, but what if, about the other plan here? What if we are using vertical stripes, right? So vertical stripes. Let's put a vertical stripe between the picture like that, right? Now I can all of a sudden I realize, hey, no matter what I put my vertical stripes here. No matter where I put my vertical stripe, I'm still it's gonna be limited between see this curve right here is the, is the upper curve, right? And this curve down here is the lower curve. See what I'm saying? Now? So we don't have to worry about breaking up into two separate intervals. Okay. So and then using vertical stripe like this, then what's the thickness in this case? Thickness gonna be what? The the X in this case, right? Alright. So after pointing out a picture right here as a brain process as a planning process we here. Do you guys have a choice now? Which one do we do we go with? Which one would be more convenient for us here? Yeah, using the vertical stripe here, right? So that we don't have to worry about the, the breaking up. Yes? So in that way right here, let's set it up right here. So in the way that we're using vertical stripe, it's fine, right? We're gonna go with thickness being the D the X. You guys follow with me right there? And then uh, let's look at the height here, the height of the stripe, this height, right? Or the length of the stripe. Even though it's a vertical length, a lot of times we call it height, but uh, just say the length, right? The length of a uh, stripe. Yes, we need some upper curve, right? Upper curve minus some lower curve, or another way of saying some upper boundary minus the lower boundary, yeah, right? So the upper boundary is here, this area right here. You guys see that? Right? And the lower boundary comes from the other curve. So note for yourself, this curve right here from the picture, I, I have it in the other picture right there, this curve here is the x squared minus y, I think, equals zero. Are we good? Right. And whereas this curve right here giving the, the upper boundary, for this area, this curve here is the x minus y minus 2 all squared to 0. Are we good with that so far? Okay. And so in that way, we need to express because, see, think about it, upper curve minus lower curve, but our, we got our thickness here is dx. That means uh, the function that generates the function that gives the length of the stripe, right, got to be in terms of x. You want to say no? That's why upper curve and lower curves, we have to express them as function of, of x. Am I making sense with that explanation, Rika? We've got we to gotta express them in terms of x. So now, in that case, see, not all is, see, these all come to an equation, but they, they don't always, and I purposely put them in that version right there, where you're going to be able to derive the equation in terms of x, right? Depending on how we do here. So the upper curve here right now is written as an equation x, right? Minus, and then you got y minus 2, all squared, equals 0. You guys follow it? The equation is just all over, right? The equation is just an equation. But now we need to express this equation to display as a function of x. So x is the variable, and y here is a, is a function. You want to say it now? So as we're going to add that to both sides, x equals uh, y minus 2, all squared. You want to say it now? Right, but we're not quite done yet, because right now in this step it's expressing x as a function of y. Right? We don't want that. We want y as a function of x. We want f of x. Are we good with that? Right. That's why a little more algebra right here. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But now when you take the square root of both sides, make sure you go plus and minus square root of x. Right? It will be more than y minus 2. Agree? Right? <clears throat> and then from that point, I'm going to go ahead and but then think about it. If we're adding, I mean, if we're taking the square root of both sides, right, this step right here, which one of the two are we taking? Do we need to take both of them? Because needing a function, we, we can't have one y value being both, right? That's only one of them. Which one is this, which one is this piece right here? The negative one, right? 
right? Yes. So we're going to go with the negative one, right? And we get you the bottom one here. Sounds good. Or, I mean, if, if, even if we're not sure, you can you can easily throw in an, an x value and test it out. See what I'm saying? Huh? Throw it as a 0.5, because you can throw in as a 0.5 here, right? And then put it in and then see which piece here gives you the, the lower value, the lower y value, right? And that's going to be the, that's going to be the, uh, the, the, the point of it. So, and I'm looking at the uh, minus x, I mean minus square root of x, uh, okay, equals y minus 2. Okay. So I'm adding the 2 over, that gives me okay, y equals 2 minus square root of x. Okay. Now we have found the upper curve. See what I'm saying there? Okay, so I'm going to put it in. Upper curve here is 2 minus the square root of x. Then we're going to subtract. And then for the other function. So I need some more space, so I'm going to erase this out. Okay. And so the other curve is this one right here. So we got uh, so that one is x squared minus y equals 0. And again, an equation, it's just an equation, but what matters is. Depending on what we need, we need this lesson as a function of x, right? So we're going to have to algebraically rewrite it. So here, I'm going to just simply add a y to both sides of you. Right? That gives me x squared equals y. So have we reached what we need? Okay. We want it a function y, right, in terms of x. Okay. So minus x squared. Okay. See what I mean? So that's how we determine the length. Our strike there completely in terms of x. So once again, I want to emphasize that it all it's all due to how we decide our strike, right? Deciding our strike leads us into leads us into using the, either the dx or the dy. And once you know that you're doing either a dx or dy, you're going to have to convert your equation right into in terms of x or in terms of y correspondingly. I'm good with that. So now we got the length, right? Multiply the thickness. Each one of those give us the area of one stripe. Right? Now we want to accumulate all of those stripe areas from a start to an end. That means from the left to the right, that's fine. Right? Let's look even further. So let's look at the picture now. Those vertical stripes I'm using, that's fine. From the left to the right, it makes sense that way. So which one is the furthest on the left? It can start at zero over here. You guys follow it? And then it's the last stripe. We can put this land right at this. Point right being a, a zero length strike. Uh, see what I'm saying there? Right. So where's that stopping point? Where's that end point? We're gonna find out, right? We're gonna find out where that is. Okay. So we know we go from zero on the left, right? But we need to find out where it ends on the right hand side. Okay. So let's find out. So now it's just a matter of finding the x value. So now you have to have you have had earlier. You see, you're gonna set the uh, your your upper curve here is y equals 2 minus square root of x. You guys agree? Okay. Your lower curve is y equals x squared. You guys agree on that still? Okay. So that means uh, in this way right here, we are looking at uh, setting x squared equals 2 minus square root of x. Do we agree on that still? Okay, and so for this equation here to solve that for the value of x here algebraically, one of the one way of solving this, we can re rearrange this equation as I'm going to rearrange that minus square root x term to the up the opposite side and bring that x square term to the right hand side. So we're looking at uh, square root of x equals two minus x square. And then the next step, we can square both sides as a standard step to get the x here outside of the square root, or to get rid of the square root on the up, on this side of the equation. And so that will become x equals uh, two minus x square in quantity square. And so now we're going to take some time foiling out this perfect square right here and with the left hand side currently stay unchanged. So x equals, now I'm looking at 4 minus 4 x squared plus x to the fourth after successfully foiling out the right hand side of this current equation. 
And so now further we can bring this x term to the same side with all of the other terms and leaving a zero on that remaining side right here. And so technically we can have zero equals subtracting the x to the other side, making it x to the fourth and allow me to decide rewriting the terms here in the in the, this, the decreasing order from the left to the right. So x to the fourth minus four x squared minus x. That x term once again came from that x right here plus four. Okay. Or it's better to see this in case anyone is more familiar with this form x to the fourth minus four x squared minus x plus four equals zero for anyone who's more comfortable with uh, reading the equation as in terms of all of the variable and all of the non-zero terms on the left-hand side and the zero term on the right-hand side. But this is now a polynomial, so we can proceed further by factoring. I can see that I can group these two terms here, making it x to the fourth minus x in one group, and uh, grouping out minus 4x squared plus 4 as another group. And my attempt now is to factor it out. So first group here, I'm going to factor out the x term. I mean the x common factor, making it x in parentheses, x cubed minus 1. And here I have a currently the minus 4 being the common factor. So now I can bring out that common factor, making it a sign here, switching from plus to a minus. So minus 4. And then in parentheses is x squared minus 1 equals 0. And then so now we can factor even further that the x cubed minus 1 here can be factored into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, and notice this x factor here already stays unchanged. And here minus. Now the x squared minus 1 here is a difference of two squares. So I can go 4 as in one factor. Now the, the x squared minus 1 is factored into x minus 1 times x plus 1 equals 0. And so now we can see that uh, between the two groups here, we have the common factor x minus 1. So we can factor it out as x minus 1. And then leaving behind uh, as x, uh, x squared plus x plus 1 minus 4 times x plus 1. Okay, And so now in my next step, x minus 1, the x here gets distributed and the 4, the minus 4 here also gets distributed into this group here and then let's combine like, like terms. And so after distributing and combining like terms, we're looking at x cubed minus x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals zero. And so immediately right from this factor form without any need to factor this other factor any long any further. But immediately right here we have found that leads to x equals one is one of the solution. And this indeed is consistent with this point right here where the two graphs are crossing each other on the in terms of the x value. So that should be x equals one here. And so in that reason, according to the picture over here, we can, the, the, we can see that there's no reason to continue solving this part or this factor here for equals zero any further. And so we have found our intersection point right here between the two curves at x equals one. The idea is that we solve the two curves setting it equal to each other to find the crossing point. Okay. But now back into the problem here, we produce for our sample quite simple a at this point, right? So the area here can come out. Let's clean up the terms here a little bit. In a row from 0, 1, and you got 2 minus. Now I'm going to rewrite as an x to the 1 half power minus x squared. The, the x. Okay. And then we can go ahead and take our time of going through the fundamental field of calculus. 2x right? minus a 2 thirds. x to the 3 half power, and then we subtract it from 1 third, x to the cube. On that, evaluating from 0 to 1. Right. So it comes a lot easier at this point here. So, and we got a 0 here.
looking at some substituting the zero so each term is all gonna zero out everything. So we have to simply two times one, right? Minus two thirds. That's the ones that we have, right? Minus a one third times one cube to reach. And these things here are just two thirds combined with a one third because they're looking at the and minus one altogether to two minus one, your area here is simply equal to one final area amount for that. So we got the problem solved for that. So in this problem, I brought in this example to show you guys that a lot of times you will be exposed to those problems where you need to decide, right? And just tell the main goal is to find the area, but then we are we are facing that situation that the that the scenario where you're gonna have to decide on our own here, whether we're either waiting in respect to X or in respect to Y, right? So it's all about see on the scratch work, if they're thinking about you put putting horizontal stripe right, or vertical stripe, whichever gives you less effort, you can setting up the A right? And that would be a one. Yeah. For, for going with horizontal stripes, in this case here, then we're gonna have to, to break that into two separate inner rows, right? Because the, the picture itself has breaking up of, of the area. You know what I mean? Right. So that's how it works. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanna mention one more thing before we leave uh, the, the area problems as, as an application. So now, if we're looking back at those earlier air, area problems, yeah. let's say I don't even have to call it a, an example anymore, but let's say you have a curve have a given function, yeah, yeah, x, yeah, x squared minus 4, for example, right? Then you want to find the area. Sometimes people ask you to just find Area close, right? Function f of x, right? And uh, the x axis. So the problem like this is simply just you, we, and at, when it gets to these problems, then you cannot blame it that you need to know how to graph these basic functions there, right? These are curves here. So x squared minus 4 is just that simple quadratic where it sinks down. It sinks down to four, right, on the y-axis. See what I mean? Right. So it's like this, right? And of course, you'll forgive me that I'm off scale a little bit, right? But it crosses this function right here, f of x equals x squared minus four. It will cross the, the x-axis at two points, but the bottom point right here is going to be a negative four. Right? Okay, and so. Look at the wording right here that it says the area enclosed by the function and the x-axis. See, these are not enclosed because it's not completely trapped in. So the language is telling us that the only area enclosed is here. So in other words, in other words, it's back to the kind of problem where, hey, find the area between the curve, right, and the x-axis. In, in restrict to, we got to find this out a little bit, algebraically, right? Where that is, where that is. You want to say no? And in a problem like this, it's, you can see immediately that it's, it makes sense to use a vertical stripe, right? Because the function itself is already given in terms of x, but think strictly in terms of a, 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 an area. And think, see, if we perfectly do a horizontal stripe, we could. We can still. We may still do that. But we have to break the curve into, hey, from right here, there's a left boundary, there's a right boundary. So much work for us, right? And we have to split the curve apart in terms of y. So for a problem like this, just stay right there, dy, I mean the vertical stripes, right? Thickness is dx again. Okay. So the integral thickness is dx, right? So upper curve is dv. It's a little hard to recognize, but the upper curve is right here, which is the x-axis. So we got y equals zero, right? Okay. And then the lower curve is just the function itself. So we're subtracting and then x squared minus four, we're subtracting that, right? That's how we're getting. That's how we're getting the length yeah. and completely expressed in terms of x. And then we're integrating from. You know, we need to find the two limit points here again, right? So we set x squared minus four here equal to zero. And that easily solve this equation. The, this one here is a lot simpler than the one I brought up the, the earlier, right? In terms of that the equation we solve for for x. So it gives me x equals what? X equals uh, plus or minus. Right? See what I'm saying there? Yeah. Right. So, so, in that way, right, minus 2, positive 2. Right. And then you get the area. 
and then calculate that in a row we get the area. So it brings back to the, just that kind of problem where it, it's very simple. But sometimes things can go a lot simpler than what we think, but the funny mail I've shown you guys is all there. Okay. So 4 minus x squared is the x. And then I can leave the rest where you put in that up first. Really trying to say now that we have seen this problem even before we got intense, the pretty intensity to find the area. We've done these kind of problems before, but, but we treat that we treat that completely as just the area between a curve and the x-axis, and all that kind of between a function in terms of x and the x-axis. Now we, we have a, a bigger understanding. Right? It's an area. It's just an area. Right? I brought this up just to give you that explanation of why we, we have to put the minus sign in there. Right? The area below the x axis, we have done that before. Now we, we have the area below the, I mean, we put a negative sign simply because it's, it's the upper curve being 0, right? minus is the other curve being the x squared minus 4. Right? But then at some point, we still need to accurately be able to find out the crossing point over here, right? The crossing point, so we solve that equation for 0. Now this problem is supposedly similar than any of the, the earlier example. Four here. Find the area. Got the problem written down. So the instruction is pretty simple, right? We just want to find the area that is enclosed by the two curves, right? 4 minus x squared, and then y equals x squared. Right? Draw the two curves. And these are curves that, that are uh, simple enough. You can draw like that. Boy, it out somewhere up here, right? Curve goes like this. You guys following? Okay. So that's y equals 4 minus x squared. Up each to be 4. Then y equals x squared. This or the curve in the fourth one. I wish I could draw better than this. Fair enough? Yeah, no? So the area, see, now it's been, we're the term say enclosed. So where is that area? It's, it cannot be out here, right? It cannot be out here. It's got to be somewhere in here. See what I'm saying, no? So now I'm going to leave that for you guys to decide here. Which one is easier to, to, to use? Is it vertical stripe or horizontal stripe? Yeah. And the number one thing, well, don't rely on the function. Actually, don't rely on the function. Okay? Just rely on the picture. Are we running into the breaking up of the area? See what I'm saying now? See? What's the cost of vertical stripe? I mean, vertical stripe. You don't have to do the breaking up, right? Every stripe that you put. There's always just the upper curve clearly written and a lower curve. One upper curve, one lower curve. If you go with more than one stripes, see there's a breaking up line right here. Here, now horizontally, there's the stripe down here, that line in between. This is the upper curve, this is the low, I mean, this is the left curve, this is the right curve. See that then? And then when there's when the stripe is getting up here, this is the right curve, and this is the left curve, it switches later, right? So it's giving more headache with that. So the vertical stripe is better and it's more naturally. So here in this this way or x squared. So now we're gonna go with vertical stripe, right? And then it's back to the so thickness here is gonna be dx. Okay. What about the length here? And the length, and so now it's if it's dx, then we're gonna have to keep these curves here, the upper curve and the lower curves in terms of what in terms of x, right? And so this is good also, it's a further advantage we already have the curve written in terms of x. See what I'm saying also, it even costs less for us, right? So now I'm looking at the upper curve here, the 4 minus x squared. Are you guys with me still? Okay. And then we're subtracting x squared, the lower curve. Sounds good. Right. And then that's the line times the thickness. And now we're doing the accumulation, right? Where do we start the accumulation and where do we end the accumulation? 
somewhere across the point here on the left hand here, we're going to find it out, right? And where it crosses here, the right hand here. Okay? So there are plan. We're going to set 4 minus x squared to equal x squared. Okay? Sounds good? So adding that over, we're looking at okay? 2, x squared equals 4, or x squared equals 2. Right? So that means uh, solving for this equation here, x equals cos minus square root of 2. So minus square root of 2 is on the left, right? positive square root of 2 on the right. And the function here, the area looks pretty symmetric, right? So this is things that we learned here. I don't force you to go this way, but I can recognize that since the area is really, really symmetric, meaning this function itself here is a symmetric, even function, right? So we can go from, we can go two times, the integral from zero to square root two again. It reduces some of the work there for us, right? It's all about getting effective. Otherwise, you can still go with, you know, the laying down term by term again. We're looking at four minus two x squared, right? The x, all right? So we're ready for real action. It's looking at four x minus two thirds x squared, right? It's two times, we're gonna evaluate from zero to square root of two. Yeah, no? That will make it. Uh, uh, that's why the zero substituting in here is all zero out. We only need to worry about the substituting in the square root of two. That's so four times square root of two minus we had I mean two thirds square root of two all square. Minus that's going to be two, so four thirds. Yeah, right. yeah, you are right. Thank you. Q. Yes, yeah. yeah, my bad. H square two. Yeah. All right. I brought in this example entirely just for you to understand that sometimes the problem comes just simply as. So it's quite that easy, right? It's just a matter of we draw the picture and we recognize uh, the, the area between, and then once it's the, the area, area between, we we'll, again, again decide whether we're integrating in respect to x, right, using vertical stripes, or in respect to y, right, using horizontal stripes. Okay. Okay. And then when curves are crossing like that, right, the area between the curves crossing like that, we're going to solve the equation, right, and, and let the two uh, solve the equation to solve to find the, the x value, right, making the two areas here. So we the left hand and the right hand of our integration to bound again. It's just that same fundamental that we have to decide and we have to look at it, make a judgment of whether we go to the vertical stripe or the horizontal stripe. And one more friendly reminder right there, that these problems they really match the area, so you, we should never end up with a negative answer. So for any reason that you end up with a negative answer, then we gotta check our work with that. Something went incorrect. All right, so that should be enough area.